as you all know that Imo State is still experiencing a shock after the sitting governor of Imo State, and that's Emeka Yedua, was kicked out. He was ousted out. And another person took over, and that is Hope Uzodima. He is a member, the flag bearer of APC, the present ruling party. This has not gone down well with a lot of people in Imo State. Well, of course, you know, everyone will always have his own supporter, as Hope Uzodima has Father Mbaka and some host of other people that are in support of him. In fact, Father Mbaka is known to have prophesied or said some prophetic utterances or whatever it is. And we also know that Father Mbaka is a political prophet. Of, of course, he has um, people that believe in his ministry, and that is not what we are discussing here. Finally, APC agrees that the Supreme Court made a mistake in sacking Emeka Yedioha. Since the People's Democratic Party, PDP, signaled its intention to seek a revisit, a review and reversal of the January 14th, 2020 misjudgment by the Supreme Court on the 2019 Imo State governorship election, the supposed allegedly illegitimate beneficiary of the misjudgment, Senator Hope Uzodima, uh, is all progressive flag wearer, like I said, and he came forth. That is the point here. He came forth during the polls. Now, we know that polls in Nigeria are not that credible per se, as they are riddled with violence in some, you know, some states, in some quarters, intimidation and vote buying and a lot of things. Now, these people have used hunger as a weapon, as a tool to oppress the minds of the people. So, um, a bag of Indomie, it's like, you know, it's like manna from heaven. And because some people do not want to suffer just a little bit, a little bit uphold their integrity and stand firm and say, enough is enough. We don't want any of this. There will always be betrayals, people that have given some few money. And some of them act like uh, as political thugs for these people. So that is about the election process. Now, Opus Odima and All Progressive Congress were making a very big, loud song out of the idea that once the Supreme Court delivers judgment, nothing on earth or in heaven can make the Supreme Court revisit, review, or reverse, reverse its judgment. Now, there is a popular musician, and he was once an activist until he retired, and there have been a lot of you know stories here and there about him. This is... Charlie Boy. Charlie Boy also joined the fight. He's from Imo State anyway. He also joined the protest, the fight against this press, this governor that has been imposed on them, suppose, and that is Hopu Zodima. And he said, my father told me, you know his father was, his late father was a member of the judiciary. He was a judge. And he said, my father told me that the Supreme Court is not infallible. In fact, they can make mistakes. So, um, there is this idea there is this talk um, that once the supreme court um, gives a judgment that is the end of the judgment and it ends there but as you can see right now that um, people are protesting and it is not the case here now the supreme court judgment came and apc felt that well since we took this to it went through process from the court of appeal to the high court uh, from the High Court to the Court of Appeal, from the Court of Appeal to now then the Supreme Court. And they felt that um, the candidacy of the APC present man that is there now is valid. And that is all. And it is qualified the, you know, the sitting governor. Now, the that was before the, the Supreme Court judgment on the appeal by the APC on the judgment of the High Court and the Court of Appeal that... Got disqualified. The deputy governor candidate of the APC in the November 2019 election in Bayosa State, Bio Barkuma, I, I, I didn't probably get that one, but something like that, Degi Erimeoyo, resulting in the disqualification of the governor elect David Leon. The judgment by the Supreme Court saw a sharp twist in faith, in faith as the PDP was returned as eventual winners of the election earlier won by the APC. In political equations, that was a major loss by APC and its candidate. Hence, they protested and kicked against it. That Supreme Court judgment was on Thursday, February 13, 
to the surprise of concerned members of the public that have been observing the trend in controversial and contentious judgment by the Supreme Court on Imo appeal, the APC has filed an application for the review of the judgment on the Bielsa um, appeal based on the Bielsa appeal. That was barely a few days after the disqualification of, um, like I called, said, Bio Barakuma Dege Eremeoyo. And by association, David Leon, many still can't believe that APC could seek a review of a judgment by the Supreme Court. So, what I'm trying to explain here is that if APC is seeking a redress, seeking a review of a judgment by the Supreme Court in the case of Bielsa State, then it is possible and it is allowed. That is what they are trying to um, now and, and put out there. Now, they are trying to point this out that they too have um, opportunities. They too should be able to present their case to the Supreme Court for a review. Now, um, fem there is a popular, you know, lawyer, the one that stood for Moele Shore, Femi Falano. He said, you know, this is a man that has followed the Constitution, followed the laws that we have in Nigeria at the moment. He said that it is not possible for the Supreme Court to review again this if the judges are going to be absent, the six judges are going to be absent. So, according to the constitution, the legal laws and procedure, the six judges must be present. That is it before the review can be done. So, uh, it means that they can bring in what they call technicality. And technicality has been introduced by the man that Buari brought in, and that is Mr. Um, just let's call him the, the name that he has been given, CGN Justice Stanko. He is a man that is versed in Sharia law and not the conventional law that we are practicing right now in Nigeria. So it's all a mixed up um, thing there. Now, this man can come up with technicalities, saying based on the technicality, and what is the technicality? The judges will not sit. And that's just what it is. So uh, we'll see how this is done. Now, some might call this an hypocritical turn of events. How could APC, that a few days ago, um, argued that um, argued against the review, but now they are the ones seen approaching the Supreme Court and praying for a revisit, review, and reverse of its February 13 judgment on Biosa State. That has incidentally left some implications for the January 14th misjudgment by the Supreme Court on Imo State appeal. So first, APC seems to have thrown in the towel in its fight against Supreme Court revisit, review and reverse of its concluded judgment. That implies that APC has considered all its all its position and now sees reason that a you know they begin to see reasons and think like how other people are supposed to think. Now the application for the review of Biosa judgment has indicated that APC has faith, trust, and confidence in the Supreme Court to deliver a judgment in situations where a party in the matter saw misjudgment or no judgment, injustice, or no justice at all. Three, it is no longer an issue as APC tended to drive in the early days of the PDP application for the setting aside of the misjudgment of January 14 that election matters must be conclusively heard within 60 uh, within 60 days after which it can never be revisited. Now, in a six-point summary objection and defense of the PDP application for setting aside the January 14th misjudgment, APC stated this, and I'm going to go through it. Summary of Senator Hope Uzodima's preliminary objection and defense against the application for judgment review by an Honorable Emeka Eedioa. One, Order 8, Rule 16 of the Supreme Court Rule 2014 prohibits is honorable court, this honorable court from reviewing its judgment once given and delivered safe to correct clerical mistakes or accidental slip. That it is to say that the Supreme Court can review its judgment but only on issues that do not touch on its judgment that is applicable to civil jurisprudence. jurisprudence. Two, the Supreme Court has discharged the, the burden placed on it by the law in section 285 of the 1999 Constitution and the Electoral Act within the 60 days stipulated by law for the court to conclude an, on any election matter. This constitutional body which has been undertaken by the court cannot be changed as a matter has become as it is now. In other words, by virtue of Section 285, Subsection 9 of the Nigerian Constitution, the Supreme Court, the Supreme Law in the country, Honorable Emeka Iedua's matter under any guise or name has become statute bird, lifeless and dead on arrival, having spent the maximum of 60 days allowed by the law 
in the court. So that's what they are trying to bring up here. So you, what's your own thing? Now, they said, three, when the Supreme Court has given its verdict and it has been executed by way of swearing in of the executive governor of the state, the only way to vacate its decision is through an election petition, which will no longer be possible in this case. Four, facts raised in the review are facts that issues uh, that they are facts that were joined and decided during the um, pendency of the election petition. Inviting the Supreme Court to take a look at those facts again is asking the court to reopen the case, which is not tenable at this time. From the foregoing, it becomes very significant that soon after its so-called points of objection and defense, the APC made a swift detour and recant few days after to, after to sing a different tune that roundly contradicts its original stand. Certainly, this must be the most innovative moment in the annals of pre-election and post-election petitions and appeals in Nigeria. Uh, well, the Supreme Court since 1999, it's been so, you know, very, it's so very funny here, you know. Uh, there's no doubt that by the time the Supreme Court finished with the 2019 election and appeals, a new chapter would have been written in the books of democracy and the judiciary. Now, they are going to come up with several different stories here. But the thing is that once one person is able, let's say PC, is able to take this back to the Supreme Court and they have a review, a redress of their matter, and they kind of put him back who they want to put him back, then the issue of Imo State has to also um, follow the same trend. But then they are coming up with the 60 days validity and all of that. All this twist and turn, Imo and Bayosa. Uh, well, it, it's funny anyway. Bayosa, former deputy governor elect, who was on joint ticket with his governor elect, was found guilty on account of discrepancies on the certificate he submitted. That is what um, the story is out there, although some people are saying it's not the same. The Imo case is a direct assault on Nigerians, on Imo lives, and their democracy. Vote cast cannot and would never be more than the number of accredited voters who cast them. Now, how can number four, although people claim that there were a lot of, um, you know, a, a kind of game being played in Imo State back in, in those, in, in, during the election, they, but, but they said it was number four. So who, 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 what about the number two and number three? How come Hope Uzodima jumped past the number three, past the number two, then past the number one and became number one? So, well, like I said, election, most of the time, is not free and fair. So we don't know what this is all about. So what's your own opinion? Are you from Imo State? What have you seen? What do you believe? Like for me, I care less about party. What I'm concerned about is how the lives of the people will be able to move forward. It is not one person coming there with one party. That's not the point. APC, PDP, they are all birds of the same feather. They're coming to steal, loot, and to destroy. We are talking of someone that is able to change the lives of the people. So that is what it is for now. If you are not a member of this channel, we can both grow it together by you tapping on the subscription button and the red notification icon bell below. It will definitely alert you whenever videos are uploaded. And if you are already a member, I say a very big thank you for the support.